What is up guys, Steve here. Welcome back to my channel. We are going over our 2021 rental fleets and how to make them run as smoothly as possible. Now there's multiple platforms to use on this. There's Hirecar, there's Get Around, there's Share, there's Avail, there's Turo. Turo is the one that I mainly use. But there's so many different platforms to use if you're not running your own personal rental fleet. I mainly deal with Turo, like I said, so all these tips and tricks work for this as well as those other ones, but I mainly deal with Turo, so that's where I stick with. So, I don't know, did I mention I mainly stick with Turo? Anyway, today we are going over, are you actually making money? Are you actually profitable? And I'm gonna show you some of these numbers and I will tell you that some of them, I, I basically bought as if they were you guys buying cars now, thinking that we can get rich well off of this or at least make a decent side gig out of this. So let's look into some of these numbers. And if you guys are new to all this period, uh, this is basically a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing platform where you can share your cars to other peers. We won't get too much into it. We'll just jump right into the numbers. Okay, so you're gonna have to bear with me. I don't know all these off the top of my head, so bam, we got them all written down right here. And I will end up, I'll do another one of these on the whiteboard so you actually can see what I got going on. But let's go down the list of what my monthly expenses are. Okay, so this one is more so, it's gonna be a monthly expense tracking. And this is just gonna be, what are you spending money on? And I'm not actually gonna show what I got for the profits while I check this out, but you guys have seen other videos. And like I said, I'll make another one on how much I've actually made in a month and I'll, I'll break everything down. But this is going to be just my monthly spend tracking. This is 100% what it's gonna cost for insurance, registration, maintenance. I got a little buddy flying around here. Keeps catching my eye, a little moth just went by. Uh, but basically everything that I'm spending money on to operate this side hustle. So let's break it down right here. I have two, four, five different payments on cars. One of the cars is, is a cash car, because let's face it, not everybody has 70, 80,000 to just go out and buy cars with. I do recommend that you go through and you make sure, like I said, it's stuff that you can afford on your own if these cars are down. Obviously, it's a bit debatable if you go out and finance a car versus buy cars cash. I know a lot of people say don't ever buy cars for Turo, and a lot of people will say don't finance cars. There's kind of a mix, there's kind of a fine line, but this is basically the average Joe you guys are gonna have payments, I know it, I've seen it, I've seen it way too often, but this is gonna be how to figure out your expenses. So like I said, I got two, four, five cars that are on uh, payments. Uh, this Jeep's on one and it's not even on the platform. I basically pulled it, we got rid of the Chevy, we got rid of the other Jeep, so we could have this, this one here. So this one's just gonna be bleeding money. That's all there is to it. But let's get into it. The Jeep itself is a high payment. I'll tell you, it's way higher than it should be, but it's kind of the market, the way that everything is right now. So the Jeep is sitting at, and I put very little down, and I feel like I'm trying to justify all this to you guys, so I'm just gonna stop and just throw out some numbers. So the Jeep, you're looking at $649 a month. Uh, the Focus is about $240 a month. The Mazda is $160 a month. The Civic is sitting at $330 a month. It's kind of a high loan. I should probably look into refinancing that. I don't know why it still is that way. And then the Accent, I'm doubling up on that or putting a little bit extra on that. So I have it just as $200 a month just so I can pay it off and start rolling everything over to where eventually all these cards are paid for. Now I do have the Fiesta that is a cash car. So that one, and I'm putting all that earning towards another payment. Like I said, trying to pay them off faster so that way it's just 100% cash flow. So that, all together, payments just for vehicles, we're sitting at 1586.30. So that's the monthly expenses just for car payments. Now their commuter cars, I would like I said, I would like to see them all be cash cars. I think that's the best way to go. That's what I tell you guys to do, that's cash cars. And there is a reason for this because I really do think that if you have cash cars that cover the payments of the higher end cars, then you can do really well with this. You get a couple cash cars for every luxury car you have and now you guys are just rolling in the dough. And not to mention now you have cash flow for those other cars when they are down, if and when they are down. And I don't advise to go out and put zero down on a car because with this market right now, you guys are so over inflated, you're already upside down on top of always being upside down on a car that depreciates as soon as you leave the lot. So anyway, let's get back into this. 1586 a month for payments. Now my insurance, I was going through our personal insurance and this was huge. And I'll tell you something about this later on, but insurance, 
$541.60 a month for six cars total. And I actually did have a couple personal cars on there. But when I broke everything down, $541 was my, my take of it, my business take of it. Now, because we broke it down from the personal cars and we separated it. So that brings the total up to $21.27 a month that I was spending on just insurance and just car payments. So you can tell these things need to be making money to be able to make this work. Now, what I do is I factor in the average cost, maintenance cost per car per year, and I break this up for the month. And I also try and do this with registration as well, and I probably do need to go through, I, I just remembered I don't have this on here. But just the cost of maintenance alone, let's jump into it. So the Civic that I have, you're looking at 450 bucks for the year, and this is covering oil changes, other maintenances that may pop up, wheel or uh, tires, all this stuff is included into these numbers. Okay, now the Fiesta. I thought it was a little high, but we do know that Hondas are a little cheaper than Fords as far as maintaining, but the Fiesta, I think they're kind of taking into consideration the transmission issues that they have and just the fact that it's a little bit older of a car. It's a 2012 Ford Fiesta, and it's sitting at $578 a year for maintenance, tires, oil changes, all that stuff. Now we drop down to the 2015 Hyundai Accent. This one's actually nice. It's actually right around there with the Civic. I kind of like it. Hyundai's really been up and up their game and I feel like they are the new Hondas. They are, I mean, they, they've been around for quite a while and they've been really reliable, but man, they are just on point. So the Accent you're looking at $356 a, month, a year for maintenance on these things. And I'll break all this down for monthly payments once everything's all said and done. I'm just kind of breaking down. The Wrangler, this thing is up there. And I think they go off of basically the tires, bigger motors, just all the components, and the fact that on average, people are taking these off a little bit more on the dirt, so you're kind of having a little bit more breakdown issues. But that goes up to $774 a year just for maintenance. Now the Mazda 6, that's $443. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like mine's a little bit more than that right now, but I, that's a whole nother story, a whole nother video but $443 a year for all that. So we add all this up and it comes out to be $3,077 for the year for the maintenance on all of these cars. Now I divide this by 12, which comes out to be $256.41 a month that I should be putting away for the maintenance on these cars. Now obviously, all these cars are gonna be different. If you're in a more luxury car, the expense is gonna be higher, they're gonna be lower with commuter cars. It all depends on which cars. There's an expense calculator online that you can actually check out to see what you should be saving for these cars. And it'll even break it down for the year, like after the first four years. It'll break down all of that for you. So go check it out and it'll give you a good estimate of what you guys should be saving for these cars. And I try and break it up every month so that way it's not a big surprise at the end of the year just like registration. You don't want to all of a sudden come up and, oh crap, now I owe 600 bucks for the registration on this Camaro or something, you know what I mean? So figure out what you guys need to do for your specific vehicles. So now you're looking at for a monthly expense, because obviously the maintenance, it turns into another car payment each month. It's, it's kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Just get prepared for it. So if you go with the payments, you got 1586, you got the insurance, which is $541, and I know some of these cars it depends on your state, how you're able to do this. You can drop the coverage, whatever you need to do. Yours may be different than what mine is. I'm just giving you what my numbers are a few months ago, and I'm also gonna tell you what I did to save on some of this. So you have the payments, which is 1586, 30, and the insurance, which is $541.10, which comes out to be 2127, 40. And that's just payments and insurance. Now you throw in the maintenance, which is that other $256.41, which brings your operating costs to $2,383.81. So now you know that your cars need to make at least this much just to cover themselves. And like I said, these are my numbers, so it's gonna be a little skewed. Figure out your expense tracking, but this is what you need to do to figure all this stuff out. And, and once again, I did forget to throw the registration in there. So just remember registration per cars, at least with my cars, they're a little bit older. They're a little bit, you know, they're not as fancy. They're just commuters. So you're looking at 250 on down and this is gonna vary state to state. So figure out what those are gonna cost you each month and break that down or figure out what those are gonna cost you each year 
and break that down into a monthly and you can add that to your monthly expenses. So like I said, it's a little bit all over the place. It has some future budgeting as well as expense tracking. To me, they kind of fall one in one, hand in hand with what's going on. And I can tell you, I mean, let's see. So even if I went to, and I'm not factoring in all the other stuff, all the subscriptions that I have for making the YouTube, I just kind of just going off the cars. But if I factored everything in minus the registration because that's different from mine, and this is on a month where if I made $3,900, I, I think I pulled it up, I'll have to figure out which month I did, but $3,977 in sales on Turo, and I had $21,2740 in payments, and then I had $256 in maintenance. I mean, you can see this just, drops so quickly and that 2127 was payments and insurance so you can see where this drops really quick because then it brings you to a grand total of 1593 19 with five cars and that's where you got to figure out is this actually worth it to make it a full-time gig it's a little bit harder it's, you can't really just jump in it and i know there are cars that perform way better there's cars that perform way worse but you have to really take all this into consideration if this is going to work for you guys. That's why I'm a huge thing on don't over leverage yourself because you may get into it and realize like, hey, this thing's not making enough money for me. Or I'm putting way too much time into it because that's the last thing you want to do is if you're making, you know, 1600 bucks a month and you're putting 80 hours into this, is that really worth it for you? Now for me, that 15, 1600 bucks a month, I'm only putting a couple hours into it. So I'm not that worried about it. Yes, the margins could be a lot better. They could be a lot worse. But for right now, I'm just kind of showing you guys exactly what the average Joe out there is doing. They're going out and buying these cars at these high payments, not putting anything down, and now they're bleeding money. So you gotta be really careful with this. Figure out what you're doing. So it all comes down to putting down a good business plan and just being really good with your finances. So once again, with the finances, like I said, I had something for you guys. If you guys are in California, Nevada, Illinois, or Arizona, you can, you can actually qualify to get your insurance under Liberty Mutual. So now you're not having to hide what you're doing. So my payments went from, what did I say? So my payments for insurance went from $541 down to $220 for my cars. And I don't even have to hide it from them to tell them like, hey, I'm renting out my cars. They know exactly what I'm doing. They know exactly what they need to cover. And they are working on being able to offer this to more states. So if you guys are in those states, definitely check out Liberty Mutual. It's the small fleet insurance, it's commercial insurance. It works out really great. And it's basically, they know that these cars are used for the platform and most likely any incidences you know, I think it's like 90 or 95% of the incidences that happen to these cars happen while they're on a rental, not while the host has it in their possession. So there's one way to go about it. I know there's a few other insurance companies out there where you can get commercial insurance. The only stipulation with Liberty Mutual is you have to be a power host or you have to be an all-star host to be eligible for this. So make sure you guys are striving for that. But as soon as you do that, you are, you're golden. I mean, they will help you out, they'll look out for you. They, they take care of you guys as much as you may think they do or don't, just make sure you're doing what you need to do. And if you guys are in Arizona and you need a rep to get a hold of, I'll drop my rep's name down there with her contact info. She said, by all means, reach out. She knows what it's like, she knows exactly how to handle it. I know a lot of you hosts out here in Arizona have already spoke to Christy, but she is definitely out there and willing to work with us and make it work as well as possible for us. Right now, I got the lowest rate. I'm even beating California, it's great. It's awesome, glass repair, all that stuff. But check it out. I'll leave Christy's number and in info in the description and keep striving for making that money. Keep track of what you guys are making and what you're spending money on because you can really go upside down on this real quick if you're not paying attention. Hope you guys like this. There's a little lengthy, a lot of info coming at you, but there you go, it's all out there. Make sure you guys are out hustling, grinding, making that money. Do all that stuff down below. You guys know what to do. Catch you guys on the next one. Later.